Hey everybody, this is Adam Revere, and in this video, I'm going to introduce the Irish Baron. The Irish Baron is part of the Frame Drawn family, which dates back all the way to 3000 BC from an artifact that was found in Iraq. Now, the Irish Baron, obviously, in terms of its technique and style, didn't exist back then. I mean, just even the name alone had one of its earliest, I guess, creation or use, rather, in a 15th century medical transcript that was used to describe the sound of a blow to belly. Baron, generic term meaning drum, but also a thunder, like low, dull sound. And, and in terms of its birth of being played as we know it today, the closest document are paintings from history literary portrait painter Daniel McLeese. And during his time in London around the 1850s when he was creating some of his pieces would have Babrons in them. And it's easy to see in one drum in particular that you can see the player has one hand behind the drum and the other on the opposite side just as how you play, well, a frame drum in general, but also the baron. And in terms of makers, that wasn't really known or really, I guess, popular in, until the 1920s or about 1920, and uh, specifically in the county Kerry, where there were makers known to exist. Now the popularity or just that boost uh, popularity with the use of the frame drum or the baron didn't really come in until about the 60s and as early as the 50s to where it had its you know big revival and growth in Irish music and in the description below I'm going to add a couple links that go more in depth about the history of the baron and even its etymology of how it got its name and some of the references to some of the ancient drums that come from the Middle East and Northern Africa. So without further ado, let's get to playing the drum. Now I'm going to introduce you three ways to play the baron. Now one style is just using your hand, referred to as Ross Common. The other two use a stick or a mallet, also referred to as a tipper, and they're called the carry technique or the West Limerick technique. And knowing how to play with using your hand will help you out with playing the technique or playing the drum with the tipper. So let's get started. So I'm the Ross Common style and so to play this drum and which in this case I'm using a Tycoon percussion 14 inch tunable drum and normally and sometimes when I first learned my frame drum didn't have a crossbar and so normally I would hold the drum up top and, but with the crossbar, I usually have my hand down at the bottom, place the baron right next to like my side of my body, almost like right into the crease between my, my chest and my arm. So yeah, I'm shoving the drum in my armpit. Now to play the drum, we wanna think that we're gonna be painting the head with the back of our fingers. So take your hand, make it into like a fist and kind of go to the top part of the drum. Again, don't punch it like it owes you money, just simply just relax your hand there and then relax your knuckles and your fingers down. And you're going to turn your wrist as if you're turning a doorknob. So I'm just going to be going straight up and down. And just scraping the top of the head. So nice and twist. So I'm going from in terms of like angles, let's call it, you know, for looking at the face of a clock. I'm going right about 10 o'clock between 10 and 11 down to about four just back and forth twisting my wrist doing the whole motion of the beach is that way so just up and down and doing this very straight one two three four is reminiscent of one of the popular music styles called a reel so this very straight phrases everything kind of breaks down in four so you know one two three four one and two and three and four and or twist a little bit faster, which a lot of Irish music is, or it will eventually get faster. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E. And 
And again, you want this to be nice and loose. You don't be too tense or tight as you're playing with your hand. And some players will take away some of their fingers and only use one, be it like their, their index or their middle finger. It's a completely different sound than using all your fingers. Now the other popular style is referred to as a jig. So in phrases or groups of four, now we're doing groups of three. So we got one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three. Or if you're playing playing it fast, I always counted triplets as you know one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and. Uh. And yes, for music geeks, the and and the uh do not actually hit precisely on the and of the uh of the beat. They're just vowels that I use to make it easier for me to speak the rhythms and the timing. You know, one and the two and the three and the four and the one and the two and the three and the four and the. So that's your very basic jig pattern. Now let's get to using a tipper. And tycoon percussion, this is the tipper that they provide. And I actually really like it. I've had the chance to use a variety of tippers and the ones I'm about to show you are some that I've had for a really long time and have gone through them all. And the one with the various like small rods, I just recently made myself. So these are other tippers that you can use. And so depending on how you wish to play and what's your comfort style, that might be one thing when you're out shopping, sometimes not just for the bow room, but just going out and finding a tipper that feels really good in your hand. And, and I'm really impressed with how this ended up. So you wanna hold it, so we're gonna go right into carry technique, also referred to as the traditional style. And we're gonna hold it kind of like a paintbrush or how a left-hander holds their pen and pencil. So with the two notches in the middle, I'm gonna take my middle finger, I'm gonna take that top knuckle, let it rest just below this one notch. My thumb kind of curls around and kind of grips that top notch and then rest in between them. And then my index finger just, just again, just kind of rest just along that bottom notch where my middle finger is. And, and actually, let me adjust that a little bit. Yeah, so I end up kind of a little bit more like this. So I'm not completely engulfing that top notch Again, I'm kind of holding it just like I would as a paintbrush or a pen and pencil, especially if I was a left-hander, but I'm right-handed and I do hold my pencil this way. But that's not why you're here. So now, same thing. I still want to have my hand next to the drum as if I'm going to you know, play with the back of my knuckles. But now I want to have a little bit more of an angle. I'm going to go more towards like a 30-degree angle against the drum, focusing on the bottom part of my tipper to be hitting the drum. So doing a reel, just going straight up and down, like one, two, three, four. Again, turning our wrist as if we're pointing to all the people where the beach is located. So nice and slow, just up and down, nice and relaxed. Now, let's say I wanna go a little bit faster. A method that helps out on trying to feel like you have to just mechanically go up and down really quick you're mainly doing a quick whip down. So for those of us who are around, like myself being a Gen Xer, if you're older, a method to measure your body temperature was a thermometer filled with the most, one of the most poisonous substances around, mercury, in it. So yeah, you needed poison to see if you were sick or not. And to get that mercury at the bottom of the thermometer, if it's been laying flat on a shelf, you had to flick the thermometer to get that mercury back down to the bottom. And so that's what you're gonna be doing. So you, again, you hold the, hold your tipper. And I'm mainly, I'm focusing like I'm flicking just in one direction and then just a nice little, I'm still kind of bringing my wrist back, but I'm just letting that natural bounce do its work. So technically I'm only really putting work on my downstroke. My upstroke just kind of comes back naturally on just this whip bounce back so I can now I had a small slip to where you heard a little bit of a bounce or a diddle 
which I'm going to talk about like next. So on doing the bounces of the diddles, I have to just tilt my wrist down a little bit. So as I'm on my way down playing, if I just tilt my wrist down, the top end of the tipper will hit the baron. So And of course, for the years I've been studying and playing, this is what I was introduced to, playing the carry style technique. Now, the next technique I'm gonna show you is the modern style, top, also referred to as modern, top end, and West Limerick. So in the approach of this, there's three different ways to even play this style. But the one thing that they all have in common is your fulcrum. So just like for anybody who's a drummer watching this, you're grabbing your tipper as if you're grabbing your drumstick, but instead of your hand being at the bottom or close to the bottom of your drumstick, you're now going all the way towards the top. And with the tipper from Tycoon, I'm able to rest my thumb kind of right at the ridge or the edge of the top end of the tipper, and I wrap my index finger around. So that's the one thing they all have in common is my fulcrum point is my my thumb and index finger kind of whooshing it back and forth like a windshield wiper. Now, the variations come from where you place your three fingers. So the one is to where you place all three underneath. So again, just focusing on just the twisting. So in this, is like I'm not moving a lot. I'm really just focusing my pivot point just from my fulcrum or my thumb and index finger like where it bends there. Now the other style, or I guess variation rather, is almost as if you're holding it like you're doing traditional style drumming. And so I have my my index, you know, my saw my fulcrum, I still have my focal point. Now I'm wrapping my middle finger around. And again, it looks like I'm holding it as if I'm playing a traditional style snare. And now the same thing, just now my favorite is when I actually I put all my fingers underneath it. So this actually emulates me as if I'm holding a drumstick. I get to utilize my fingers underneath to help me with quick movements and bounces of my tipper. So I get to use a good blend of both the fulcrum as well as my fingers. To help me move the tipper. Now, as you can see, so it's like I'm not, you know, with this, it's like it doesn't really give me much room to do that bounce or diddle technique that I showed you in using the carry technique, but that's okay. There are, I have seen some players to where they, they kind of go about two thirds of the way up on their tipper and holding it the way they do, top end style or West Limerick style, but they. They kind of bend in a little bit to get the top end going. And so again, with that, you can just kind of experiment, see, depending on, you know, if you get this drum with this tipper or you buy your own tipper and you practice, you know, at home with your Bauron or what have you. And, but instead, we're not gonna do that method. What we're gonna do is literally, you're just moving the stick back and forth quicker. So if I'm doing a reel, just, you know, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So 
now that kind of alternates where my downbeat is in terms of it's always because in the carry technique if I'm doing a reels it's like my right hand going on the downstroke is always more times than not that's going to be my downbeat to where with West Limerick there's times where I'm doing a reel if I do it do a quick diddle I'm alternating where I'm playing my downbeat being coming in on the upstroke or the downstroke something that Pratt's getting used to but don't worry I'm going to have more videos that dive more into exercises and technique this video is just mainly just to introduce to you which ones you might feel a little bit more comfortable playing so now let's say you haven't bought or ordered a Byron yet, but you might have went out to a shop and you found a really good tipper, in which again, it's like the moment you find a good tipper, jump on it. If you, do, if you don't have a drum, it doesn't matter. Find something that they allow you to hit to try one out. But for me, one of the best methods I used to practice when I didn't have a Byron was pizza box. And especially now, this video is being made during the coronavirus pandemic. And what better way to not only practice and support your local restaurants and specifically pizza parlor. And after I enjoyed myself a really nice piece of pie from Brozini's, Brozini's here in Indy, I kept the box to use to practice with and so same thing just take the pizza box just rest it on your leg and use whatever technique you wish let's kind of honor the old traditions and so we'll just use the carry technique for this Switch like so there's always methods and there's always ways to practice so I hope you enjoyed this introductory video to the Irish Baron so stay safe be well practice obviously support your local pizzeria when when the uh, practice the Baron. And until the next time, keep the music going, my friends.